So let's talk about another Pathways to Employment program here. So I am not going to go over these stats because uh, everybody knows pieces or portions of them. Uh, but substance abuse is a huge issue in not only our area but the nation. Uh, the opioid uh, epidemic has been uh, deemed a uh, national health crisis uh, um, by the Surgeon General. Uh, the one that a couple of them that kind of stand out to me, 70% of manufacturing companies in Indiana believe it's a problem. We believe it's a problem. Uh, I'm sure everybody in this room believes it's a problem. And then the other one that's kind of frightening, uh, one out of three babies born at Reed uh, test positive for illicit drugs. So uh, it's just, uh, it's frightening. Uh, and, you know, we knew uh, as we went down this path that we didn't have a lot of the answers and we're not experts in this field by any stretch of the imagination, but we knew that uh, we felt strongly that we wanted to, to make an impact and do something different to again change the process beyond uh, what we had been doing previously. So another partnership program uh, between the folks that you see listed on there and it's really a second chance uh, program. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a commitment. Uh, uh, if a potential associate makes a commitment to, uh, uh, to live a substance-free lifestyle, we'll make a commitment to uh, make sure there's a job ready and available for you uh, once you have made that uh, transition. And one thing that was critical for us was that when we started down this discussion path, um, I've talked to a lot of people and uh, uh, one of the things that, that we see happening is that folks are relaxing their standards for uh, could it be marijuana, could it be any other drugs, we're not going to drug test at all. For us that was not an option, that was just a non-starter conversation. Again, the, the work in, entailed is very uh, potentially dangerous and not only for the associate themselves but those around them and so sacrificing our standards on safety was, was not an option for us. So this whole conversation uh, started uh, a little over a year ago and as I mentioned earlier it, it rose to the level of our board of directors and it just so happened that uh, we have a board member who uh, has a, a, an association or a friend in uh, New York, uh, Dr. Mitch uh, Rosenthal, and he is an expert in the uh, substance abuse field, has worked in it for nearly 40 years. And uh, when our board member started having a conversation with Dr. Rosenthal, he's like, look, I don't know if I can help here or not, but if you can get a group of community leaders together, I'd be willing to come out and start a dialogue on what we might be able to do to change the equation here. So that meeting took place uh, last September. Uh, and then out of that, we had a core group that was formed uh, uh, with the, uh, the team members that you see there. Uh, Jessica from uh, Ivy Tech was a key element uh, of that, uh, along with the folks at Manpower, Centerstone, and Meridian. And uh, uh, it's really, we're learning as we get down this path, but we're very encouraged about uh, the program, uh, where it's at now, and, and where we think it, it can head to. And really what drove it. So um, there was obviously a business need. Uh, you saw the stats on our uh, workforce demographics. Uh, so that's a key part of it. But the other piece is, uh, as I mentioned, we, I mean, we got 700 folks in the uh, Richmond area. And we felt it was very important to invest in the community and come up with something to break the cycle. And uh, you know, it's easy to sit around uh, uh, parties and, and talk about the problem but we felt it was important to do something about the problem and that's really where the program started. So I've, I've went over the model a couple times. Uh, so the process is we actually screen in a minimum of two different locations in the process. So when an individual applies at Manpower, part of that application process is a hair follicle screen. So we don't do just urine, we do hair follicle because it looks back farther. Uh, and then after that initial screen, we also do a screen uh, when the individual is going from temporary to permanent hire. So there's a minimum of two times where uh, that screen takes place. 
And what we had seen over the last couple of years as we were trying to scale up, uh, our failure rate for screens uh, tripled. And so uh, we were looking at anywhere four or five percent uh, dropout to 15 percent or more uh, over the last 12 months. And so based on that and the needs that we have, it's like, look, we've, we've got to change the process. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the path that we set down. So where are we at right now? I'm not going to talk in a lot of detail because I suspect we'll have some questions uh, about this uh, afterwards, but here's a high level overview of the process itself. So again, if a applicant fails a screen uh, at Manpower, uh, we refer them to one of our uh, uh, service provider professionals and that's Centerstone and Meridian. Uh, they do a series of evaluations on that candidate and really that assessment is to look at is this individual a high probability of a substance abuse disorder or a low probability of a substance abuse disorder. Uh, and uh, depending on the outcome of that assessment really determines the path forward for that individual. So that individual gets a customized individual treatment plan. It could be as simple as uh, one session and perhaps some, some off-site meetings, or it may be as uh, uh, comprehensive as inpatient uh, or uh, residential treatment program. So it's really tailored to the individual. And that recommendation is made, again, by either Centerstone or Meridian. We don't determine that. We leave that to the professionals to determine what that treatment plan looks like. As they go through the treatment process, uh, we are doing random screens, uh, basically every couple weeks on that individual. And whether they're high probability for a disorder or low probability really determines the duration uh, for those screens moving forward. Uh, once we've deemed uh, someone is, is uh, good to go, we actually bring them into a safety conscious role. So we don't actually put them immediately on the, uh, the machine. They could be doing material handling, they could be doing 5S or uh, cleanup type of work. Uh, they could be doing maintenance, clean tooling, that type of thing. But uh, we're very sensitive to the fact that, uh, again, our processes are dangerous. We want to walk before we run. So we put them in a safety conscious role for a period of time. Uh, and then finally, we do random screens every couple weeks, uh, and the duration of those screens uh, is dependent on uh, if there are a high probability or low probability for a substance abuse disorder. So feedback has been positive so far. We've actually got 17 individuals in the program right now. Uh, if you'd ask me four weeks ago, there were eight people. Uh, in the program, so it's actually picking up a lot of momentum. Here recently, we think we're starting to, to get out uh, uh, regarding the program. Uh, it's a pretty good blend of individuals. Uh, early on, it was a lot of low probability uh, individuals for, for uh, substance abuse disorder. Uh, that scale is tipped a little bit now, and, and we're getting more high risk uh, individuals or high probability individuals uh, in the program. Uh, but again, uh, we felt like we didn't have all the answers. And we knew we weren't going to get all the answers uh, anytime soon, so let's kick off a program, learn as we go, uh, and, and see if we can make a go of this. So uh, uh, again, a little bit of detail about the services that are provided by uh, each one of our partners in this. So for the Centerstone and Meridian folks, uh, they're the ones that are experts in this area. So the assessment, uh, the various assessments that are done to determine uh, probability and risk are done. Um, and they make the recommendation basically on what that treatment plan can look like. The employment coaching side can take place. Uh, Ivy Tech has very specific programs about life skills, being workforce ready. We do some of that internally as well in terms of coaching, uh, having buddies for, uh, for these individuals. Uh, and then we obviously have monitoring and accountability that takes place on our end uh, in doing the repeated screens uh, after uh, an individual is, uh, is in our workforce. So those are just a piece of uh, the program itself. Uh, again, I, I suspect there'll be plenty of questions on this one. So in the, uh, 
program itself. Uh, I've got some of the key links on there. We have a specific microsite uh, within uh, Belden.com that talks about the program itself. Uh, there's some other resources on there that not only talk about the uh, the problem, uh, but some potential solutions uh, that are out there. And finally, uh, the contacts uh, within the Belden side are listed there. Uh, but we also have uh, partner representation uh, here today also that are key elements uh, to this program. So again, this is not a silver bullet. Um, do we expect that this is going to solve uh, substance abuse uh, problems uh, in our area? No, we do not. However, I think what we've all determined as a core team is that having that opportunity to have some hope, uh, you can kind of see at the, uh, the end of the tunnel there, there's a job waiting for me. Uh, I can have gainful employment moving forward. Uh, all the folks that we've talked to think that's a key element uh, for success moving forward. And so that's uh, why we've made this uh, investment uh, in the program. I know uh, one of the questions uh, that's going to come up is, how are you paying for it? Uh, so right now, we're, we're self-funding this. Uh, again, uh, we're looking to seek uh, funding options moving forward, but we felt uh, we weren't going to let funding get in the way of, of trying this pilot program. And uh, we are committed to the program. This is not you know, a, a pilot and it's done in 12 months. Uh, based on the feedback and the success we've seen thus far, we're going to be fully committed to this uh, for the foreseeable future. And uh, we're uh, hoping to, uh, to have a lot of success with it uh, moving forward. So I will uh, pause there uh, in the interest of time and uh, open it up to questions. Yes, sir. You, uh, you say 17 participants to date. Yep. What was your start date? Uh, I apologize if I didn't bring that up. February. So we started February of this year. Uh, another question. Uh, your, you, you said in your comments that your primary interest is, I, I'm assuming, shop floor, safety, machinery, yep. to put people at risk. Uh, what about the people that are in jobs where there are no risk? Are, are those people being drug tested? Uh, not unless it's for cause. So uh, if an individual has a accident, uh, is, uh, you know, one of their uh, colleagues suspects there's an issue it, for cause, uh, we can do random screens, but it would only be for cause. So you bring up a good point. We've talked about internally, you know, could we expand this uh, um, program to uh, existing individuals in our workforce in non-manufacturing roles? And yes, we, we are, uh, committed to the program. Right now it's focused on the manufacturing piece of this because that's where our greatest need is and, and our, uh, uh, the greatest demand for positions. But there's really, if we're successful with this, there's no reason we couldn't expand this not only to other areas of the business, but taking it to uh, other pockets of not only Belden, but uh, uh, potentially other employers uh, in the area as well. Yes. During the process, if they test positive one time during the process, is that excluded from it? Uh, so basically, they would reset at that point. So they would go to the beginning of the process. So it, it, it is not only a second chance program, but it is a multiple chance program. So we don't, we're not at a point now where we would, uh, again, as a, if I look at the flow chart of the process before, uh, it was a pretty easy flow chart. Uh, if they failed a screen, it was a uh, red box of stop uh, and never to be started again. So we have looked at, at you know, what if an individual relapses? Uh, we would basically reset them to step one of the process. Yes? And you're saying Melvin pays for the whole treatment plan? So the, the folks at Centerstone and Meridian have been uh, great to work with. So the first option they look at are, are there insurance coverage options for that individual? Uh, and we've been pretty successful about finding that uh, thus far. If that 
falls through basically, uh, then we would cover that, but there are costs that we are absorbing. The screens are not paid for by any other uh, entity other than ourselves uh, right now. And obviously there are things that we never thought of basically of, uh, oh, this individual doesn't have transportation to get to work. Uh, so we've had to, to, to absorb some additional cost uh, as part of that. And so the other piece in, in putting them into safety conscious roles, uh, in some cases those aren't positions that we would normally have uh, uh, for you know a large number of individuals. So there is some additional cost that's part of that uh, as well. So right now though from the top down uh, we have said look uh, for now this is important to our long term uh, in essence survival. Uh, we're going to absorb those costs for a period of time and, and see if we can make a go of this. Yes? How does your uh, work comp carrier feel about this program? So uh, we have I think the key element of this is that you have two paths, basically. You can ignore the problem and take the risk that you have associates in your workforce that are uh, under the influence and you have no knowledge uh, or it's a don't ask, don't tell policy, or you can know about it and do something about it. So right now we've not had any issues in terms of uh, our carrier or our legal team, because uh, trust me, they uh, uh, at the top levels of the company were briefed on the program and, and we just felt it, it, we know the issues out there. We can either choose to ignore it or do something about it, and, and we're choosing to do something about it. Yes. Two questions: Is is at any point is there a disqualification that occurs? I I know you said if somebody tests positive again, they reset. I mean. It, is there As of right now, no. So it's an ongoing... Yes, yeah, so I mentioned the 17 individuals. Out of that 17, we have had one that has voluntarily dropped out of the program. Uh, but, you know, again, we don't force them to stay in the program. It's their choice. Uh, and for, for reasons that, that uh, family, some family reasons, they, they basically told us that, that they needed to have a paycheck in some form or fashion to bridge. And so that individual dropped out of the program. But, but right now we have 16 out of 17 that are active in the program. And when they're active in the program, they are still a manpower temporary employee. Good, good point. Could be either. So we actually have had three individuals that uh, were uh, Belden Associates at the time and came forward and said, hey, I, I, uh, I think I've got a problem. And so uh, uh, there actually, we did have some, some existing Belden Associates that once we rolled it out, uh, they decided to, to join the program. And that, that actually brings up a good point. We were very concerned about the reaction of our existing workforce when we rolled this out. And so uh, our Plant management and HR team did all hands with all shifts to talk about the program, number one, and to alleviate some concerns. It's like, uh, you know, I got an attic working next to me kind of deal. And, and uh, so after folks learned about the program, they thought about their situation, I think to a person, we couldn't come up with an individual that either hadn't had a family member, a friend, someone they knew uh, that, that has had issues with substance abuse and the more they thought about it, that initial defensive reaction turned around to, hey, I, I think this is the right thing to do for individuals. Because uh, at the end of the day, you know, folks aren't looking for a handout, they're looking for a hand up. And uh, we felt this was an important part of that. And, and, and the, the workforce has, has really embraced it over the last two to three months. But we were very concerned, quite frankly, in February when we started rolling it out. So a question and a comment. Question first, are any of your other locations doing these programs? We have not yet rolled it out beyond uh, this area, but we are... Uh, we thought it was important to kind of work through the, the process first before trying to, to scale this elsewhere. And so as we've learned and, and kind of tweaked the program moving forward, I think we're at a point now where we can start potentially introducing it to, uh, to other Belden locations, uh, as well as potentially other companies as well. So my, my comment is, is congratulations. And if I was looking for a job, I, I would look at Belden, but I'm gonna look at the stock. <laughs> Because a lot of companies don't do these type of, of, of programs to, you know, realize there's a problem but yet do something about it. So kudos to you and, and your entire management team. 
Well, thank you. But I, a lot of the credit goes to the partners uh, that we have in this program also because uh, we didn't have all the answers. We didn't have hardly any of the answers other than recognizing that we had to change our process. We had to do something different than what we were doing up to this point. And so, uh, again, I can't give enough kudos. Uh, if you have not partnered with the Ivy Tech team, please do so. Got a lot of great folks. They roll up their sleeves and they figure out how to get things done. And, and Rusty mentioned uh, that you know we don't let red tape get in the way of, uh, uh, we don't let perfect get in the way of better. And so, uh, so we're, we're learning along the way and uh, we're, we're excited. So I know I'm up against it on time here, but. Uh, uh, how does, I mean oftentimes we see with these type of individuals that you're talking about, that they've, they've been incarcerated because of this. How does that affect their eligibility for the program? Good question. So, uh, so we still have a requirement, uh, overall employment requirement of uh, uh, no felonies. So that that is still an element. So, um, so we haven't had any individuals yet that have requested application that are felons, uh, but that that may be a bridge we have to cross down the road. But but for now, if uh, if there is a felony conviction, uh, they would not be eligible for the program. And I know there may be some more private questions. I'll be hanging around all morning here if uh, folks want to talk. I think you can tell from the energy and the passion that Doug has, and he's given a lot of credit away, but obviously he's leading this charge and um, making a real impact. So I think we can all celebrate that. That's why we want to do these forums, to engage, to energize, and of course our theme this year is innovation. And Belden obviously is very forward thinking and has not just thought about it, but they're actually doing something. So. He's willing to share, and you know that that's good for all of us. So I'm thrilled that he could be here and spend his time with us.